at the heart of an electric vehicle is its drivetrain and in this video we will look at this important aspect of the Cybertruck. At the onset though we don't see anything that's uniquely or distinctly new. We however thought that as the interest around the Cybertruck builds, this aspect of the vehicle will hold significance for the many who will want to decide upon it as customers and understand its differences as a work truck with other available alternatives. We also thought of bringing in this video as many details as known and possible, further enforcing the understanding of the product in the minds of the viewers. Like our other videos on the Cybertruck, we have made suitable assumptions and we shall update many of such factors in forthcoming videos as and how we learn about them. In this video, we will start with a simple brief on the basics of electric vehicle drivetrains. This should be useful to those new to EVs and also help us in understanding the Cybertruck and its approach to addressing its product objectives. Those familiar with the basics may like to simply click for a latter chapter on the video timeline. In electric vehicles, drivetrains are at the core of every development. Unlike traditional internal combustion engines, EVs rely on electric power for propulsion and the drivetrain plays a crucial role in converting this electrical energy into motion. There are three fundamental components. The electric motor that primarily converts electrical energy from the battery into mechanical energy to drive the wheels. Among the common types of electric motors used in EVs are DC motors or those working on direct current. AC induction motors or those working on alternating current and permanent magnet synchronous motors which have magnets that spin to generate electricity. The power electronics that manage the flow of electric energy between the battery and the electric motor. This includes components like inverters, converters and controllers. Inverters for instance convert DC power from the battery to AC power for the motor controlling the speed and torque. And finally, the battery pack that stores the electrical energy that powers the electric motor. They are a set of number of identical or individual battery cells configured in a series, parallel or a mixture of both to deliver the desired voltage, capacity or power density. Around these three fundamental components are the drivetrains, which are either single speed, simple yet efficient with reduced maintenance or multi-speed that optimize efficiency at various speeds and can enhance acceleration and overall performance used particularly in high performance vehicles. Another important feature of electric vehicle drivetrains is regenerative braking. When the accelerator is lifted or brakes applied, the electric motor operates in reverse, converting the kinetic energy back into electrical energy, driving the energy thus created back into the battery making the EV more efficient. Electric drivetrains are also up against some challenges. Primary of those is managing heat and delivering adequate range. And in high voltage systems, it's even more sensitive. Many of the trade-offs in electric vehicle development involve complex decisions around these aspects and safety. In the earliest days, the range of electric vehicles was a source of severe anxiety. Under 100 miles, from 100% to a dead battery, people weren't certain of reaching their destinations and often anxious about their trips. In the more recent times, however, most EVs achieve 200 to 400 miles or even more in a single charge and the anxiety has shifted from the range to the charging and particularly the externality of a reliable charging infrastructure. Equipped with these basics, I think we are now ready to talk about the drivetrain in the Cybertruck. The Cybertruck has three trims and hence the three distinct drivetrains. At the onset, we know very little because these vehicles have just begun deliveries. So we are going to chart our thoughts around what's known and what is evident, much like our previous videos on the Cybertruck. We will make more videos to update the learning from what is revealed, experienced and updated. The first trim is the rear wheel drive which we will give a skip in this video as few details have been made available about this trim 
which is slated for delivery not before 2025. Keeping the functions of a truck in mind, I see few people showing interest in this trim which will likely have a permanent magnet motor. More so, it would not be out of place to imagine this trim being offered to keep the listed price close to the lower prices announced in 2019. And seeing its range, I also believe its battery pack will be significantly different from those we have found out about on the higher two trims. You can't possibly have 250 miles of range on the same battery pack that delivers over 300 plus miles in the other two trims unless it is probably software managed. So it's best we talk about this trim when it's available. The dual motor Cybertruck has one permanent magnet motor on the rear, primary axle and a front induction motor. This is a signature Tesla way of doing it. You also see it on the Model 3 and Y all-wheel drive and the Model S dual motor. How this functions is that the rear motor brings in all the power to the drivetrain with its magnets and the system draws into the front induction motor when and as needed for additional energy. The trade-offs in the two motors are very interesting. The induction motor requires electricity to induce the magnetic field. The induction motor has lesser passive losses and no magnetic field when shut off. They can freewheel and spin with no flex related losses. What that means is when they simply run when asked to and shut off. They have no magnets on them and hence are even cheaper to build and could last really long. The permanent magnet motors have the magnets on the rotor. They have a magnetic field whenever the magnets are spinning. Unlike an induction motor which needs the current to flow to induce the spin and create a magnetic field. While cruising, the permanent magnet motor is far more efficient. So on most of the drives, particularly on the freeways, the dual motor Cybertruck will essentially drive like a rear wheel drive. It's when those moments arrive, when it needs that extra power, will it drive the inverters to generate it by inducing the front induction motor. Regular dual motor designs have a clutch disconnect to reduce losses typical of a dual motor system. That's when you have permanent magnet motors, both back and front, that cause what's called a back EMF or flex losses. Unable to switch off instantly, those forces cause drag losses. Not handling them properly are known to cause problems in some other EVs out there. But that's all avoided in the Cybertruck dual motor, which has none of those problems with an induction motor in the front, also making it a good design and engineering decision. This is certainly not a first in the industry and big electric trucks exist with only induction motors. This is the first prominent factor to keep in mind when looking at the Cybertruck dual motor all-wheel drive. So to the common driver, this is not anything special or unique, but among the many things that Tesla does right in electric vehicles. Additionally, it has a front and rear mechanical differential lock. An open differential when given power will power both the wheels on the axle equally, enabling turning, maneuvering, different wheel speeds, assuming all the wheels have equal grip. A lock differential on the other hand ensures that both wheels on the axle have to act alike, have the same speed. That's not great driving around parking lots etc, but very useful when off-roading. Consider a situation when one of the wheels is going over a rock. A lock differential pushes the force to the free wheel. The need to move together pushes that force to the wheel in need, helping the maneuver. Very unlike an open differential. This enables the car to overcome those hurdles, making for great off-road driving. So looking at the Cybertruck, if off-roading turns out to be a major use case, as is expected, the Cybertruck dual motor could prove significantly better than other alternatives. This is simply my anticipation and judgment and I will reconfirm it once the truck is available. The differential locking in electric vehicles can be achieved in multiple ways and that can impact the experience as well. But on the face of it, this looks a significant feature to me for what's essentially a work and lifestyle truck. The Cybertruck seems to achieve the differential locking via a simulation driven by its brakes. Again, to be confirmed after an actual experience. I am leaving some links in the description for those wanting to read more on this. 
The tri-motor named CyberBeast seems to be completely different from the dual motor in its approach on the drivetrain. It has a front permanent magnet motor also with the differential lock and a rear induction motor. So completely interchanging the axle positions of the two types of motors in the tri-motor CyberBeast from the dual motor Cybertruck. That makes it a front wheel drive vehicle with the front axle now becoming the primary axle. The torque vectoring motors in the rear pushing that additional power as needed. I am sure this may have been shocking to anybody in the know of things and I am highly unsure of why this has been done this way. This will probably be significantly lesser power from that expected up front. But probably with software updates, it could then be beefed up to the likely 1000 horsepower. Just a guess again. You may read different numbers on the rivals and their power, but with Tesla's brilliance in traction control, even this could work wonders. Don't be mistaken and you will see that in the real world, the cyber beast could sweep its rivals away on power. A mechanically locking differential in the front on the front permanent magnet motor, bringing max effectiveness handling terrain etc. What happens to the rear axle is the big question. Simulating the effects of a locking differential or applying power to the correct wheels when needed will be a real craftsman's job. It is ultimately all about the correct application of power to the correct wheel at the right time. That makes all the difference in driving and handling driving tasks in electric vehicles. For my final thoughts in this video, the dual motor is the proven system here and will deliver outcomes that are more predictable. The tri-motor is a system with high potential in the Cybertruck, but also a bit of a surprise package. It may turn out great or it may not. The dual motor very much looks like the safer bet, which will meet expectations and probably surpass them for many. These are the very early yet profound features we see in the drivetrain on the two top trims of the Cybertruck. Plenty of this is guesswork and assumptions. And the follow-up video we make on this, probably after the trucks are available to us, should provide for definitive answers to some of these curiosities. These features are also those that few drivers will notice or care about. At least not those who won't put the vehicle to its test in the daily use. But because this is a unique vehicle with known likely functions, we thought that putting out these things as we see them should be useful for those viewers with an interest and those keen to learn about it, especially before taking that buying decision. And we would also follow up on our learning as things get evident gradually, updating here on this channel for the benefit of our viewers. So to end, do the good things, post in your comments which are always useful and let us know how we could make this communication better and what you would like to see here. If you want to see our previous videos on the Cybertruck, on our early impressions and its options for extended range, you can find the links here or in the description. Enjoy yourself and happy holidays.